know that this guy had a vasectomy? Because he told me more than once. And How I... old is the other person? He's old 43. enough to be my father. Her father. <laughs> Sit her down. My father's the way I've come through too much. He was supposed to be my dad. Only did we use a condom. I the first never day. used a condom with was, Daniel. Why would always... I get on national TV and say I never used a condom? Entangled in the love of an older man, Miss Moyette wasn't only left with a broken heart, but also with the responsibility of taking care of the child on her own. Baby Dady, on the other hand, is in for just the play and not the pay. Awkward situation, right? Let's see how things unfold for this duo. You are not the father of baby Nyla. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Moyette, what has been Mr. Lester's involvement in baby Nyla's life since her birth? Well, Your Honor, Mr. Lester has hardly been involved in Nyla's life. Um, besides the fact of three cases of diapers, a onesie that he bought for her, which was a boy. Not promising state for Nyla. Well, Mr. Lester believes that Nyla isn't his and such situations. People do tend to act this way, which made the judge ask the defendant how he could be so sure. You're saying that this is all in her mind? Yes, Your Honor. It is definitely in her mind. We've had sex, and I don't know why you're lying. Like, we did, we just had sex yesterday. Oh, if all of it is her imagination, then why are you making babies with her? Mr. Lester, you could not only fool enough to fall prey to a too young girlfriend, but the guy was not using any protection either, and we all know such actions call for what? And yesterday, when you had sex, did you use protection? Yeah. No! <laughs> Iris! Your Honor, I have no reason to lie. I plant my my baby's pregnancy. I planned this. I wanted to be with him. I still want to be with him. What she's saying is you were having unprotected sex with her then? Yeah. That is a very good way of becoming a potential father to a child, ain't it? And what did Mr. Lester argue? Well, he doesn't want to be a father. Hello, mister. Things don't work like that in the real world. Became more obsessed. Every time she expressed um, how much she cared for me and how much she wanted to be in a relationship, I expressed how much I didn't want, and I never misled Miss Moyet or anybody. Now that's just playing with someone's feelings. Why kept feeding young girls emotions when you are going to just abandon her like that? And if you think that we are kind of overstating, listen to how this toxic dynamic had affected the baby mama. My background um, is not the best as far as me and my father. So him coming along, being older, being what I wanted from my father, I clung to that. When you're with someone every single day and you're at his house every single day. Tragically, the plaintiff knew that her obsession had to Nayla being fatherless. And with not protecting herself, she had brought the baby to a vulnerable place. But now there was no option but to come forward with the truth. I used the condom with me and you know that. So stop lying. Your stop. Honor, not only did we use a condom I the never first day, used a condom with was, Daniel. Why would always... I get on national TV and say I never used a condom? That's not a good thing. Indeed, not a good thing, but we admire baby mama for owing up to her mistake, unlike the sugar daddy who wasn't man enough to be honest in the courtroom. Believe it or not, the guy had even brought lousy evidence to defend himself. You always had protected sex. We have protected sex, Your Honor. Miss, Miss Let me Yana, explain. Miss let me explain. Mr. Lester and I have never had protected sex. Only when I was forced herself on me did we not have protected. And when I Whether say I for, forced myself on him say, or not, it was always unprotected. Mm. This all was just crazy. Mommy was just loud and agitated. Potential baby daddy, on the other hand, was sneaky and trifling. Not a good combination, I must say. Such equations always bring drama. Hopefully, DNA will sort this out for good. Mr. Lester, you are Nyla's father. Yes! Yes! Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Ma Didn't I tell you? Ma Didn't I tell you? You need to be respectful. Didn't I tell you? Ma'am. Ma I understand you're upset. Yes. You use proper language. Do not approach him. Oh, shit, no, 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 no. Go ahead and have a seat. Mom, I told him and that baby was... Lies after lies have left Mr. Gilbert and his mother in paternity doubt. They don't believe a word coming out of Miss Cole's mouth. This dilemma has brought them to Judge Lake. Because if DNA doesn't prove what baby mama is claiming, the family has no intention of taking in the child as their own. I'd like to just find out where we stand on this whole situation. It's everything that comes out of their mouths is lies. So you believe the baby she's carrying is not your son's child? Absolutely. I, at this point in time, I cannot truly, honestly say I believe a word.
word of anything that comes out of their mouth. I do not believe that is my son's child. That's why I'm here today. Classic case of friends turning into friends with benefits, but it was a one-time thing. Even when the pregnancy news broke out, daddy wasn't very excited and responded to the texts from the plaintiff like this. I found out I was pregnant. Would you be in the baby's life if you knew it was yours? And then you wrote back, yay. No, yeah, why? There's supposed to be a space there. Oh, yeah, why? So you, uh, oh, oh, I get it. It's not yay. Yeah. It's yeah, why? And if you think that was dramatic, then you should be sure to know that. When the defendant's mother called the baby mama's palace to talk about the child, she was totally shocked at what had been going on in the background. When I called her and her daughter, other daughter, Tasha, was in the background yelling, he's not the only option, he's not the only option, it may be somebody else's, it may be somebody else's, and I'm going, no, really? No, that's not true. I, you, you can were hear at her. My Hold house. on one second, and Nicole. I I'm, I'm going to get to you. Listing this, Tiha's mama got really freaky and told the court that she was the one who disclosed the other potential daddy because she didn't want to hide such important information. Believe I'm hearing through this testimony is that there is another possibility. Yes. But, Your Honor, he's fixed and he did not complete. So you're saying the other potential father. However, it turns out that the other man had not given any proof of the vasectomy. There could be a chance that he was just lying. Or is there a chance that the baby mama is lying about it? On that note, the defendant presents some more evidence to expose. I 100% know the baby is yours. You write back, I don't. Miss Cole writes, the other guy is fixed. You write back, so he says. And if you believe that, you wouldn't have lied to me. Miss Cole writes back, do you want to be in this baby's life? And then you write after a paternity test. And while the defendant's mother was being all mature and compassionate, the plaintiff's mother was busy making a nagging mess, even though she knew that her own daughter was an equal perpetrator of this mess. Your, your son caused this. Your That's son right. caused this. That's right. Well, if my son caused this, why do I have evidence right here? The day they went to take the paternity test, this says your daughter is praying that it, well, that it is my son's. That what she is doesn't that? know for sure. Wait, what do you have? Right here, Bro, Your Honor. Please you hand me like that evidence. See this? She is praying that it is. That it is. Wait. I want it to be his so bad. Confusion is just dripping out of this paternity ledger. FYI, things are about to get worse. As after this judge took out her conception calendar, and we know how wondrous it can be. When were you intimate with the other guy, Miss Cole? I was told it was around the second of April. Is that true? No. When was it? April tenth. On. Oh, so you were told around the second. Oh, April oh, tenth. the next night. Yes. Uh, Your Honor. Your Honor. He was, I was told. also told that it was the week before me. Who told you that? You did. No, I did not. Yes, no, I did, did not. The bottom line is, in open court, she's saying it was the next day. Oh, man, this is just a mess. The only good part was that the family was ready to step up if Miss Cole's claims were true. If not, life was going to be real hard for the baby. And the mama, because she was too old to be the dad, was not ready to step up. Mr. Gilbert, you are not the father. <sighs> okay, baby. I can admit when I'm wrong. She has your daddy. If someone needs to stick out for her, you got me. I've seven years with my husband. Okay. Step right up and witness the drama unfold. Sparks fly as a heated dispute ignites between a mother and her son's girlfriend. What's the bone of contention, you ask? Well, hold on to your seats because the mother claims that Ms. Terrell's son is not biologically related to Mr. Jackson. For a DNA test to prove your son, Kakitho Hughes, is not the father of Ms. Jackson's two-year-old son, Eli. Elijah Jackson. Furthermore, you're suing Ms. Jackson for $1,000 for defamation of character because you claim she posted comments on social media claiming you and your family are deadbeats. Picture this. The grandmother firmly believes that her son's baby, as white as snow, couldn't possibly be related to him. She argues that the child lacks any features of his father, leading her to conclude that this little one can't be her grandson. Even the judge is taken aback by such bold claims. Can you believe that she's judging a book by its cover? And just by looking at this child, you've determined and said to yourself, He's I not, do not believe that's he, my he, grandchild. That, that can't happen. There's no way. There's no way. So, Ms. Jackson, obviously you have a different opinion. Yes, 
basement. Hold your breath, ladies and gentlemen, because now we have a surprise guest stepping into the courtroom. It's Terrell's sister, Ms. Archivis. Whose side is she on? Her brother's girlfriend or her flesh and blood? Brace yourselves, because it seems like Ms. Archivist is convinced that this child is not her brother's, and she's quick to dismiss Ms. Jackson as nothing more than a side chick. Mr. Hughes has. <clears throat> in 10 years, he got ten two years. babies he got, he's been by another for woman, years, and those years. are my grandchildren. For 10 years, so she was. She, all she basically was for him was a snack cake on the side of his meal. Thank there you. There was nothing more. Thank you. A side chick. And it's all she has done is she's been trying to put the baby on us. Miss Terrell herself has some compelling evidence up her sleeve if you're willing to take a peek. For starters, the baby bears the surname of his mother's ex-husband. Furthermore, the birth certificate lacks any mention of a father's name. Miss Jackson argued that the father wasn't present during the birth. Don't think the child is his. Why would she be trying to change the name? Well, We've been trying to change the no. name. A couple weeks ago, even we couple talked about ago, it. He's two, he's when, two, when two he, years. My, my son ain't said his no name's like not even on the birth lying. certificate. Stop lying. Okay. Who's name was on the birth certificate. Do you know? Nobody's. Exactly. Because it's because he went. It no, he be was anybody. not there it when be, he was born. That's the exactly. Lie. I could put you, anybody on there, but I didn't. But you exactly. you put he put he the judge called upon Mr. Hughes to shed some light on the matter. Does he believe he's the father of this child? Well, here's a twist for you. Mr. Hughes reveals that he's biracial, which means this Snow White baby might just be his son. But hold your horses. His sister and mother are adamant that he denied fathering this child. What's going on here? Is Mr. Hughes easily swayed? Or did he struggle to make up his mind? Your brother is sleeping with her and not using protection. Couldn't he possibly be Elijah's father? You know No, what? not in this case. Uh-uh. Like, uh -uh. like the no. old saying goes, no. mama's baby's papa's maybe. Maybe. That's my point. Mr. Hughes, what is your side of this? Please stand, sir. Step up to the podium. Do you believe you are Elijah's father? I just gave him the benefit of the doubt because I'm biracial. My father's white, you know. Prepare to be shocked by the truth bomb dropped by Ms. McBirth. She confesses her frustration to the judge, and boy, does it pack a punch. What's got her so worked up, you ask? It turns out she's exhausted from taking care of her son's kids. Mr. Hughes seems to have a knack for sowing wild oats without considering the consequences. I, I, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm sick of it. First of all, she's I'm talking about previous All people. these babies. He okay, got, hold, I on, big no, one hold on, hold on, take care hold of. on, stop talking, because finally Ms. McBirth is speaking in the real truth of what she's really frustrated about. I've, I've been through hell. Every time I look around, it's a baby here, it's a baby there, and I'm the one stuck helping, gotta feed them, take care of the clothes, and, and, and keep them while the mom and daddy either go to work or run the street. And now, for the grand finale, the truth was about to be unveiled. Hold up, because this might get dizzy. Why am I saying so? Well, you can see how non-negotiable the plaintiffs have been about this paternity. You can't say how they will handle the result if it doesn't go their way. Mr. Hughes, you are Elijah's father. No! A damn lie. I know that's a damn lie. Let's go. Let's go up. Unanswered questions and loneliness. It's difficult, right? But one has to keep their courage up, or else the truth will remain hidden forever. Ms. Dandridge, with all these thoughts, came to meet her potential father for the first time. Ms. Dandridge, you have asked for a few minutes alone with me before the defendant joins us. Yes, ma'am. You say you are here to determine if you finally found your biological father. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Dandridge here always believed her sister's dad was her father until she found her adoption papers. And after several attempts of confronting her mother, she finally gave her a name and mom a quick contact with her. I made a Facebook page called Finding Joseph Lester Sigmund. Um, in the first week, I had uh, 300 followers that were following my Jerome, story. can you please? And message me names or family members that could have been related to Joseph Sigmund. A week into my search, um, a lady named Sabrina messaged me and she says, here, I found his mom and his brother. You should call them to see if that's... The young woman was eager, but also scared to meet her daddy for the first time. I'm sure it must be tough for her. So the judge brought in Mr. Sigmund so that the father-daughter reunion couldn't get delayed anymore. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Sigmund, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Oh, that's beautiful. 
I cannot believe you are standing in front of my face. Defendant shared his feelings that he was shocked to find out about his potential daughter because in his youth he knew he was sterile. But he said that he was happy with her mother and expressed great joy while recalling his relationship with her mom. 1987, I was a drifter. I was probably around 28 years old. I drifted down in the floor, down the boardwalk. I met this lady, she tapped me on the shoulder, which was her mother. We spent a lot together, beach life, we traveled. We run the beaches, we jump fins. So he mentioned all the merriness of their relationship. Good. It was nice to know things were positive. But what happened on the next turn? Where did the fallout take place? The next defendant shared what pulled these lovers apart. Things got blowed up. She, she was gone one weekend. I got in trouble with the law down there. I made some bad choices. I got kicked out of the state of Florida for a year. And knowing that I was sterile, I knew it wasn't any reason to go back. It was sad to know about their short, bittersweet story. Then Mr. Sigmund replied to the judge that his inability created doubt in him, and also her mother could be seeing other guys as well, to which the plaintiff calmly agreed. He is my dad. I have a whole life, you know, that he was robbed of if this man is my father, and I pray. I really, really, I really, 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 really want him to be my dad. I just, I need, I need this. I have a hole in my chest, and I, I need this. I can see it. The stakes of this case were very high. A girl questioning her identity and hoping for proving her paternity, and a man who wanted to finally embrace his daughter. It was a sensitive moment, but the truth should be revealed to give them a final closure. Mr. Sigmund, you are not oh, her father. That's not so. I can't breathe. I can't Sit her breathe. down, Mr. Sigmund. Just put her down. How can you double a mother's grief who has already lost her both sons? Not just one, but two. Mrs. Watts is testing her patience in this difficult situation when she found that her deceased son could have a baby as well. This mother needs answers today. Mrs. Watts, you are here on behalf of your deceased son, Alex, who was tragically murdered just a few months ago. I'm very sorry for your loss. You stand here on his behalf because you doubt he fathered the defendant's 20-month-old son, Caden, and you have asked for a DNA test to determine the truth. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Plaintiff painfully shared her loss and stated that her two sons went to a friend's house where due to an altercation, both of them got murdered there. It was devastating to see a mother recalling her son's death. Then upon being asked, Ms. Shirell talked about her relationship with the alleged father. Can you tell the court the nature of your relationship with Mr. Stewart, Alex? We were in love. Every time you seen Alex, you seen me, you seen him, you like we were always together. We planned on having a family together, having that future together. But fortunately it was cut short. How there long anymore. have were you in the relationship? Three years on and off. Talking about a father-son relationship, the defendant shared that she was sure that he was the father because Mrs. Watts's son, Alex, had a deep bond with her baby and he never questioned for a test. But grandma cut her off and shared her doubts. Well, the issue was my son had went away for some time and before he went away, he told me that Alexis was pregnant. And I guess this was during the time that they were on their breakup. He was involved with someone else. And then when she had Kate and I said, Miss Kate and Alex's, and she said that she didn't know she needed a DNA test. Then the defendant explained that during their break, she had a one night stand and confided in Alex about this. But her text to Mrs. Watts was due to confusion because the pregnancy test took some time. But after the results, she was sure of Alex's paternity. Next, she continued talking about her pregnancy. He didn't want to keep the whole pregnancy a secret. He not he did not want nobody to know about the pregnancy. Or... Why is that? He Alex was a secretive person. He did not like people in his business. And at the same time, I didn't tell my family I was pregnant either. So we both decided to keep this a secret. He was a private person. They easily called him a secretive person. But how can you be like this when there is a baby on the way? Judge asked them about the birth and Ms. Sherrill revealed that she kept it a secret and Alex wasn't there as well. The next judge asked the defendant about her son's last name and she explained her reasons. I gave him a friend of mine's last name only because I have a, to me, I have a female's last name. I didn't want to give him a female's last name. And... When the time came for me and Alex to get a blood test, I told him we can go down to the court, we can pay, and we can get his last name changed, no problem. They took secrecy to a new level. Who keeps a baby's birth a secret? Then the judge brought in the plaintiff's witness, and he also expressed his doubts regarding the baby, saying that Alex never confronted them about his son. Upon this, defendant shared her opinion on Alex's secrecy. Yeah, because we keep our granddaughter, you know, some... But Alex also got a blood test with his daughter also. They did get a blood test with her too. And it was determined that he was the bi 
biological exactly. father. Exactly. So of course he's going to claim her because he got the blood test to know exactly sure. This case is so calmly confusing and no one knows exactly why things have been like this until now. Then the judge asked the defendant whether the baby had any relations with the plaintiff, but she replied that due to lack of personal transport, they don't have a bond with her son. Next, Mrs. Watts shared her reasons for detachment from the baby. I didn't want to open that door and get attached to the baby and then find out that he may not be his and then it'd be like I'm losing my son all over again. Yeah. I don't want to get any attachment if it's not my son's child. Um, I think he's a beautiful little boy. And, and I just want to be sure. Secrets and unanswered questions have left a baby's life at stake. It was not a hopeless case, but the actions and expressions of both parties were so ambiguous that we couldn't see any light of hope, and the judge was ready to read the result. The percentage of relatedness between Ms. Lita Watts and Caden is 0.006%. You are not related. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis, I have to ask you, do you know where Caton's biological father is? No. 